Hi guys, I've been doing a bit of research for my new hobby of metal detecting and in the process I came across this um, picture of this nice little knife. Uh, it's a medieval style folding knife um, and I know I said I'd never make another knife but I really like the look of this so I'm going to give it a go. Um, again, out of a bit of Farrier's Rasp, I've already started here, I've just whipped it across with the um, cutting blade. I've just whipped a lump off the end. It's a bit stuck. Um, and as you can see, it's about a quarter inch thick. The width of the rasp, which is about two inches, I guess, and it's about 30 mil high. Um, and I'm going to use that as my blank. Now, this is the sort of basic components I'm going to make: the handle and the blade separately. They're going to roughly look like that. They'll probably look nothing like it when I'm finished, but that's the plan. So we'll stick this in and give it a go. Now I want it uh, to be wider. So what I'm going to do is, I've made it taller than I want, so I'm going to squash it down and draw out the point on this end, hopefully. That's the plan. And thin it down, obviously. So let's get it in the fire. See what we can do. Right, we got it warm. Just give it a belt, turn it around, give it a belt the other way. Now this is where you really need a good pair of tongs because it's awkward to hold this little piece purely because it is little and it's also tough. See that's drawn it out a little bit already but it's gone pretty cold pretty quick. So we'll whack it in again and get it warm. So, as I was saying, it's pretty tough stuff, so you really need to be able to hold it pretty firmly. You can see there I'm starting to taper the blade, and even I'm having trouble holding it, even with a good pair of tongs. Um, so you really want to make sure you've got a good pair, or just an old pair to fit properly. You know, I've got loads of tongs but I still sometimes need to adjust them to fit the job I'm doing which is simply a case of get them warm, put the job in and hammer them about a bit just to make sure they fit properly. I'm just going to keep tapering this down and try and slightly thin it out a bit towards the blade or towards the cutting edge of the blade should I say because it's started off a quarter inch thick we don't want to end up at that we want to end up probably about eighth see that's coming down probably about an eighth at the top or just under tapering down to the blade or to the cutting edge keep calling it a blade Oops, dropped it. And of course the trouble is the thinner you make it, the quicker it cools down. So you really need to sort of work pretty pretty quick. But the problem is you don't want to work it too cold, especially as this is good steel. You can see that's almost too cold already. Just a little bit of heat left in it. Actually the, the video doesn't show the heat quite as well as it does with the naked eye. So there's lots of heats involved. Obviously if you've got a nice big bit of iron you can work on it longer. All right, I'm still tapering this down, trying to get it to the basic shape that I want. So now as you can just see I'm 
working along the cutting edge, thinning that out. Got the hammer angled slightly, just thinning that out, that cutting edge out. Let's see, we're getting there. Getting to the basic shape that I want. But it's all guesswork, having not done this particular job before. As I've said on other occasions, it's just a, a question of applying techniques that you know to a different situation. Thinning the back out now, as well as the blade. I've done it again, as well as the cutting edge. So at the back, you can see now the back's thinning down now. That's probably a, still about 3 16 so it wants to come down a bit more. Now that's a good point. You see the scale, I don't know if you can see it, has embedded itself in the blade there because I haven't cleaned the anvil uh, often enough so that's a good point. I'm going to heat it up again and see if I can get that out because it's going to save time when I'm um, filing and cleaning the blade up. You really want to get keep your anvil clean so that you don't hammer the scale back in. Obviously you can't odd some of it but the cleaner you can keep your, your anvil the better. You can see the cutting edge is getting quite thin now. And that tapers all the way up to the back edge. And that, I think, is about where I'm going to leave it for now. I've got the general shape that I want. See it's tapering, but it's still quite thick at the back there. I've left a bit of meat on the back there for where the handle attaches. So, I think the next job is going to be the handle. Now what I want to do, I've got the, the basic shape of the blade and let's see if I can hold on to it properly. Can't really see very well in this light but you can just see that the back edge here is a bit thicker and what I'm going to do is bend this bit around the blade so that it fits snugly. And if you can get the idea but I've got to bend this end down so that it will come down and join sort of there and allow it to, to pivot so it's got to be bent and bent round but as I say I don't really know what I'm doing so I'm gonna get it warm give it a go and sort of try and work it out as we go as usual but hey that's half the fun of it trying stuff out, seeing how it works. If you don't try it, you'll never know. So, got that a bit hot. In fact, I've got it almost too hot. We're just gonna bend a little bit over, about, probably about half inch, maybe five eight, over the edge there. Try and keep it relatively square, although I'm doing it over the rounded edge of the anvil. I think I would have been better doing it further up here over the square bit. Knock it back into itself a little bit. Keep it sort of square. And then what I'm going to do is just put it over the edge of the anvil and flatten it. So that we've got a sort of a cut in. You'll sort of get the idea when you see what I'm doing. This is where the, the blade's going to fit in. So I'll bring it almost off the anvil and hammer it down. It's going down to just under half the thickness. You can probably see there it's probably about an eighth. 
I just want to tidy it up. Can't quite make up my mind whether I need a, a rounded edge inside there or a, a square, but there you go. I'm just going to get it warm and just tidy that back edge up a bit more. I think I want it squarer. With this being so thin, it takes no time at all to heat up. So keep an eye on it, otherwise you'll ruin it if you're not careful. Now I'm not sure if I want to use this rounded edge or the square edge. I can't make up my mind. I want to go for the square. No, round, square, round, no. Don't know what I'm up to. It's tricky thinking on your feet. <laughs> anyway, just tidying up around the shaft there, keeping it squarish. Right, and that's that's not bad. That'll do us. It's flat on the back there. It's about an eighth, maybe just over, perhaps five thirty-two. Right, so next job I think is to work out how long we want it um, so that I can then taper it to put the, the, the little curly bit on. So we're going to cool her off and go and try and work out how much I need. Right, well before I have worked out how much I need, I've actually put a hole in both bits because I want to try and make sure that they're going to pivot properly. I've got this old rivet here which won't go in the hole properly. Really should have made the hole a bit bigger. In fact I'll probably get my file in it in a minute make it a bit bigger. But that, if I can get hold of it properly, is basically how it's going to go. That top edge is going to hit on the top there on that where I've cut that down and that's going to stop it folding back on itself when you're using it and then when you want to close it up it just closes back but as you can see I put that little half circle it catches so I'm going to file that out there so that it sits and then I'm going to hopefully bend that round and then figure out how to bend it further to make it look nice. So anyway, we've basically got it... If I can get the blooming rivet done. Basically got it where we want it. And I've sort of worked out that it should fold up. So I'm just going to whip that out before I bend the end round. And I've just got it up in the vise. I've just got a chainsaw file, I think it's a 532. I'm just going to give it a bit of a go. Probably doesn't need as much as I'm giving it, but we'll see. So there you go, we've got a little nick out of it which hopefully will now allow it to fold up better now I have actually put my file through the hole so that my rivet fits a bit better now I can't get it in front of the camera now let to see how it's working and that folds up much better. If I can get it in front of the blooming camera. Come on, get your act together. We can't, still can't really see it very well, but trust me, it does. It fits much better up there. And it's sitting much more snug on the end of the blade, just here. So now we've got to work out how long it's going to be and draw it down. Right, well I've roughly worked out it needs to be about five inches, so that's what I've cut it off at. It's all as I say it's all a bit hit and miss. So let's draw it out. Magical 
disappearing tongs. Draw this out as usual. Draw it out square. Same old story. Don't do it round because it will split. And again, this is where you need some really good fitting tongs. Because if you hammer that and it flies out and clocks you one in the face, you'll know about it. Ideally, I suppose you'd like a, a nice small pair of bolt headed tongs so you can get over the end and hold it completely. But hey ho, we can all wish and want. Again, because this is quite small bar, this is actually 8mm bar or 5 16th, it cools really quickly. There's going to be lots of heats. And as usual, up and down with a hammer and move the job under the hammer as much as you can. And you see I'm hammering right the way back up even though I'm not intending to really draw it out right back up but I want to make it almost square rather than round so that when the blade folds up it sits neatly underneath so I'm working right back here just to take the edges off because I want it sort of a, a rounded square, if you can understand what I mean. So I'm drawing it down again. And so it's all, all guesswork as to how long we need it. I'm just doing it by eye. And so keep an eye on it in the fire because that will get hot very quickly being that thin. And you can bugger it up very easily if you're not keeping your eye on it. And I think it's probably about as small as I want it so now I'm doing the corners. Now it's starting to cool down I'm taking the corners off so we're getting sort of the rounded square effect. Running down the diagonals almost. Well, it is the diagonals. Taking the corners back off. If you were doing this hot, you'd keep doing that and then you'd end up turning it back into round. But I don't know if you can see that. It's just had the edges taken off. It's not quite square and it's not round. Now I'm just going to put the curly bit on and then try and figure out how to bend it. So this will get hot very quickly so you really need to keep your eye on it the very end will get hot in well seconds only needs a tiny little tap round be very gentle bring it back on itself and keep the move the metal moving because you'll get a flat on it otherwise if you see there you go that's quite nice and round but if you didn't keep the metal moving while you're hitting it, you'd get a flat. So now we're going to try and bend it round. I'm not quite sure how we're going to do this. I think what I'm going to do is clamp this blade to the back of the anvil and use it like a template. Put it over the edge so I can put the rivet through as a guide. Yeah, I'm just going to sort of get it warm, give it a bit of a tap, and then just sort of check it as I go. And hopefully, get it round so it fits nice and snug on the blade. I'm going to find my tongs. I don't know what I'm up to. It's trouble, I haven't got much time these days, so I'm rushing about a bit. Not quite as. at ease as I normally am. Right, I think we're just about ready. We're just going to put a bit of a, a bit of shape in it over the hole. I would have done it over the um, over the beak but of course you can't see it so save moving the camera, just put it there for now. Try it up. 
doesn't look too bad to start with. Just to, I'm going to have to do a bit on the beak now. So I've just put a, bit, a little bit more shape in it, and that's coming around nice. Yep, that's getting there quite nicely. I'm pondering because I'm not really sure what I'm going to do once it gets to the end of the blade. Because I want it to look nice, but I don't want it to come around too sharp. So not really sure what's going to happen now. I'm going to be doing a bit of thinking. Now let's move this camera around so you can see a bit better. You can see there I've I've actually rasped the end of the blade flat where that is going to attach. Now I'm sorry but my arm's in the way but trust me that fits really nice. So I'm going to leave it at that stick it up in the vise and I'm going to cheat for this last bit. I've had a thought and I'm going to use the gas. Two reasons. One is I'm running out of time today and two, as I've said in other videos when I've used the gas, it's so controllable you can really get the heat where you want it. Um, you can do it in the, in the forge, you just get it hot and then just cool it out where you don't want it hot but the gas is so much easier. So I'm just going to hold the blade in there and then just pull this round to where I want it. Unfortunately I want the heat a bit further down because it's bending too far up. So I just want to bring it back and try not to get the end of the blade too hot. That's it, that's a bit better. That's better. Pull it up tight. Put it round. That's better. Much better. Yeah, that's much better. So it's not too unsightly. I'm, I was sort of slightly concerned about how this was going to look once it wrapped round the blade. But I don't think it'll look too bad. It ain't going to be pretty, but it's it's not too bad. That's going to just pull that in. And if you get your pliers in the right place, that just finishes that off nicely. Just give it a little more of a tweak. You can actually see there what I mean about the, the sort of the, the, the rounded square of the material. Right, it looks quite nice to me. That fits in there nicely. I'm going to cool it off. And then we can think about what's next. If I can get this in focus, that's basically how it's going to be. And actually, it's quite comfortable, surprisingly. Right, I'm afraid this is going to be the end of part one. You can see there it actually fits in really nicely. Um, I'm going to have to uh, figure out how to bend this bit down so that the blade, when it's tight, can come past it. Because unlike my last folding knife, which had a sort of spring to hold it, the spring of the material, this I think is going to have to be friction, so it's going to have to be tight. But you can basically see how it's going to work and that, as I say, is really actually quite comfortable so I'm quite pleased so far, but anyway as I say, it's going to have to be the end of part one come back fairly soon keep looking, because in the next week or hopefully sooner I'll get this finished, we'll sharpen the blade, we'll tittle about with it so that it all fits together nicely bit of filing here and there, we'll sharpen the blade, we'll heat treat it, harden and temper and all that business, polish the blade up, or I might even try and black it, I don't know, like the uh, the one in the photo. 
But anyway, I'm sorry about that, but I've got to go and do some real work. So hopefully I'll catch you on the next one when we get it finished. And hopefully it'll actually work. Thanks for watching.